Yeah, just like initially like, oh cool, okay cool, like we've, <laughs> we've booked our tickets, that's sick. And then like, maybe like two days later, I was like, fuck yeah, we're going, like there's nothing that we can do to stop us now. Hey guys, Frank here, and Sarah, <laughs> and this is Moving to Thailand, The Journey. Week 12. Week 12. Mm -hmm. It is, yep. So, what's been <laughs> happening this week? Well, what happened to you when you were writing notes again? Oh man. That's pretty funny. First a near snake attack, <laughs> and now I get bitten on the air by a foot. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, bitten. bitten on the ants by a foot. <laughs> I know, I was walking with my ants and a foot came up and I whoop. <laughs> nah, so please um, forgive that misspeak, but yeah, I got um, bitten on the foot by <laughs> an ant. So it's just not, it's just not great. No, um, not ideal for walking. Everything in Australia is trying to kill you. Wearing my sandals again, out on a walk before the podcast, writing down some notes, and pretty much 400, 500 meters in, bitten on the foot. So, yeah, maybe I need to focus on the walk a bit more and just do these <laughs> notes at home where it's a bit safer. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, nah, it's, I don't know, I'm just off it. Oh, I'm just bad luck, am I? <laughs> Snakes, ants, what's next? <laughs> Spiders. Dingoes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's that's what I <laughs> I put myself out out there and on the line for for this podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. That's just um just part and parcel of uh, living in Australia. Mm. Um, walking and doing podcasts. So, <laughs> shit's dangerous. Yeah, it is. Um, now on actual real stuff. Um. We are, believe it or not, still super excited yeah. about having booked our flights to Bali and mm. the one-way ticket to Bangkok yeah. in Thailand. It kind of like took a couple of days for it to sink in for me. Like it was, yeah, just like initially like, oh cool, okay cool, like we've, <laughs> we've booked our tickets, that's sick. And then like, maybe like two days later, I was like, fuck yeah, we're going, like, there's nothing that we can do to stop us now, like, the tickets are booked, it's done, we have to go. Yeah. And then I started getting, like, really excited about it, and, like, yeah. Not sleeping too well. Yeah. <laughs> too, too excited. <laughs> yeah. Too hype. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're looking at booking in for probably next weekend for the mine tours. Yeah. Um, just out in the jimmies. Mm. So, new vlog coming soon, stay tuned. That's cool. Um, but yeah, we just thought we'd mention that and keep you guys updated and yeah. something yeah for us to do and sharpen our teeth and the video editing and the yeah. vlogging, um, vlogging space. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. we're really excited to do that and as we said before, looking forward to potentially finding a gem to put in the wedding ring. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else? We haven't really like had a really big week in terms of new things. It's just been still working on things that we have previously been working on. Um, yeah, I found so, that like when I was writing the notes that mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we didn't really do much this week, but then started writing the notes and I found that we did mm -hmm. quite a bit more than like, even if it's not, I mean, planning is work and yeah. researching is work. So Mm. It all adds up. Yeah, for and sure. Just yeah, taking time to think about things. So, um, yeah, we've done more than more than what we thought. It's not the busiest week, but at the same time, it's definitely mm. not been um, a week of nothing. So yeah, it's felt busy for me mm. in terms of like just continuing to work on the things that I've already got set up. But there's nothing. I haven't really done anything new until yeah. today. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we have definitely. Um, found that the savings have we're going a bit harder on that um i think it's been having the flights booked so having that 
having that goal, um, and now it's it's kind of locked in. Yeah. It's definitely it's made it more real. So it's made it made us work work harder on saving and just being a bit more conscious of spending mm. and um, spending less on yeah frivolous things and yeah for sure that kind of thing. So I think it's definitely one of those things that if you um, if you want to achieve your goal first you got to lock it in so whether it be signing up for a race for a competition for mm. for this like booking in the flights and stuff it really um helps change your mindset and just makes it more real yeah so you're just more focused on um getting to that getting and reaching that goal yeah for sure um so just not procrastinating and yeah just booking it in and um Making a solid plan, mm. and, and that really helps with the um, with the saving sides of things and um, with the work side of things. So yeah, and I think on the spending side too, like there's kind of a point where we're like, okay, we have an end date. What's the point of like buying more stuff or like having things that we're just gonna have to get rid of at the end of the day? So there's no point of like spending money unless we know for sure that we can take it with us, kind of thing. Yeah, being a lot more conscious of spending. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah not looking and buying new things. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of things, I can't remember what they were, because they've just gone out of my mind, but looking at things and going, oh, yeah, that'd be cool, but then I'm just, because I've got that goal locked in of um, moving overseas, it's just kind of like, mm -hmm. it's really the forefront, and I'm just like, well, no, it's, it's not yeah. feasible, it's not, it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. That money could be better spent elsewhere, and... Um, it's just a hassle to buy, sell. Get rid of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lose money most of the time. So yeah, Yeah, it's um, definitely good to lock in. If you've got a goal, lock it in, um, mm -hmm. book something. And then also um, just telling people, other people would be goals uh, and plans to have someone to hold you accountable for it. Yeah. So we've sold sure. our family and um, some friends as well. And that just, yeah, psychologically, just kind of, um, you don't want to let them down and you don't want to, I guess, make yourself look like a liar or a failure yeah. as well. So yeah. it's, it's just an extra mental um, mental boost mm. to achieving your goals is to, yeah, just to yeah. tell people and to have yourself be able to be held accountable yeah. by others that you, that you care about, of course. You don't want to be, if you tell someone you care about, then got a lot more reason to um, mm. follow through with it mm. so yeah having family friends that you can discuss and tell about your goals and your dreams um, yeah. definitely just adds there's all these little things that add to um, the the willpower and the your ability to actually follow through and to achieve your goals so mm. just those two things of um, yeah locking it in and then also, telling people to so be held accountable can really um, yeah just add up. And I um, think starting this channel for us to like helped keep us accountable because it was like like we actually had something that we had to update every week and like we've gone out on a limb and started a channel and if we just like stopped doing it, it there wouldn't be any more videos and people would just be like the heck happened to them like I wonder if they did it type thing. <clears throat> yeah, well you put yourself out on the internet mm. um, that everyone can see. So that's like accountability on another level. Yeah, it is. So it's definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely added to the, um, our desire to fulfill it not only for ourselves, but for mm. the people viewing and the, yeah. the subscribers and everyone. Yeah. So yeah, that's, um, that's accountability on steroids, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to get something done, put yourself out there on the internet and, yeah, you'll really yeah, be held accountable. Fucking do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd hope so. Yeah. But even if you don't, you know, shit happens and you can't mm. always do things. Things come up and not all goals can be achieved, but as long as you're working toward it and um, yeah. putting in the effort, then that's, um, that's all you can do, really. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen, but as long as you're... You're trying that's um mm. 
that's that's the best you can do. <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah, having like booked the tickets has made me. It's kind of just like lit a fire inside of me that's like okay, really like step the game up. Like even though I've done a lot, like we've set up the YouTube channel, I've done like my Fiverr shit. I've applied for online jobs, got the Etsy store going, started a blog, got the website up and running. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I've achieved a lot and I'm proud of that, but what else can I be doing? Because there's that like little bit of like voice in my head that's like, shit, like what if we get over there and like we're not getting paid or like mm. what if we get over there and we run out of money or like, like all of my worries are like based around money because it's like you need money to live blah 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 yeah um but it's just like i don't know i'm not gonna let that stop me that worry stop me from being like from getting on the plane yeah um so it's just it's, it's just like a matter of working through that and being like cool well i've taken the steps to get everything started mm. it's just a waiting game now and i'm just gonna keep working on it and i know that eventually it's gonna pay off but in the meantime it's like just that little bit of like, fuck, what if we've made a huge mistake? What if like, what if all these bad things happen? Mm. But then that's just me. Like I like to consider every single thing that could happen and be realistic about it. But then I'm also like, it's gonna, we're gonna get there. Like we're gonna make it. And I'm not gonna let those little tiny worries be like, no, don't get on that plane, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's definitely... What if you fail, like, that's... Yeah, that's part of life, failure. Mm. I mean, you're not going to get everything right. Yeah. That's resistance. But um... it's not a bad type of resistance, because, like, like, I'm like, I'm definitely... Like, we're going, like, that's it. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited to experience new countries. Mm. But I think it's pretty normal to have those little, like, no, worries you... in the back of your mind that's like, well, what if we do fail? But we're we're doing it, and if... We don't do it, we're never going to know. Yeah, I mean, that's like Stephen Pressfield in The War of Art, the resistance and the greater it is, usually the, mm. the more it's because it's the right thing to do or it's because mm. you really want it. So everyone's going to face that resistance, that anxiety and those, mm. those bad thoughts, but it's just about pushing through them um, and just... You know, just trusting in yourself and yeah, for sure. trusting in each other that we're gonna we're gonna do all that we can do to do it. Um, yeah, and we're gonna be fine at the end of the day. Like, yeah, we've got our channel up and running. Like, there's so many little avenues that we've started yep. to start making income online, and it's like it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of like not letting like the fact that we haven't earned any money from it yet mm. get in the way of the fact that we will earn money from it yeah thing mm. yeah it's i mean it all takes time and mm. you just got to um just do little bits every day chip away at it trust the process mm. and you know try new things and just keep keep working toward it because yeah rome wasn't built in a day yeah <laughs> so you just got to remember that and mm. yeah think Things don't happen overnight, and well, definitely the good things don't. So <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be so worth it in the end. Like we're gonna have freedom and like just be able to move around and travel and like that's so exciting and it's such a driving force. It's like yeah, like I care that things aren't like like I care that I haven't got gigs on Fiverr that are taking off, but at the same time I'm like. Cool, I'll just keep working on it and eventually it's going to pay off and I'm going to have get, like, start getting money from it. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, and you're never going to have enough. Um, you know, they, they, you could always do more, you could always have more, but mm. for us, yeah, it's just about that um, finding that good work-life balance and mm. um, we don't want a lot of money, we just want to be able to... Mm enjoy our lives, see the different parts of the world and, um, mm. you know, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not aiming for the stars, we're just aiming to be able to enjoy our life. lives and yeah. 
yeah, live our lives the to the fullest. Yeah, mm. live, the, live our lives the way that we want to live them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, enjoying that freedom and mm. <clears throat> other other cultures, other countries. So, yeah, we're not um, we're not aiming for a multi-millionaire, no. million-dollar business. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's still hard. It. Yeah, it is it's still hard. hard, but I mean, it could be a lot harder, mm. and it could also be a lot easier. We could just mm. not do this at all. You know, we could not put ourselves yeah. out of our comfort zone and not, you know, push for our goals. But yeah, we are, and that's just part of mm. um, doing something new and trying to yeah try and change your life and yeah. and all that jazz. So yeah, yeah, just. You know, face those worries, but yeah. But as I said, like it is, there's the worry there and the anxiety, but the excitement kind of like overcomes that. Like it's like, fuck yeah, we're going. Like it's exciting, and that's all that really matters. Like the tickets are booked, it's done. We can't not go. Well, we can, but <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's definitely what a waste of time. A, a lot harder and yeah there's there's accountability again there mm, you know with yeah. booking the tickets it's like we've booked them let's not waste the money let's go, you know? yeah. it's not about the money in the end anyway it's about no getting overseas and um seeing some sick shit yeah experiencing our lives that's it yeah <laughs> that's it so yeah it's um definitely something you're going to face when you're um doing anything new mm. um trying to better yourself in any way is um that resistance but you've just got to uh, remind yourself um, that yeah you've you got to try yeah for sure and um, you've got to push through it because mm. that's what keeps you in your box yeah. in your comfort zone is um, that anxiety that um, that resistance mm-hmm. and that's what makes you or prevents you from from changing yeah from improving so yeah yeah that's that's natural but Mm. Yeah, just got to, hopefully the, the good outweighs the bad, and um, once you get there, the, <laughs> the good expands and the bad <laughs> decreases. But yeah, we'll, um, yeah. we'll keep plugging, plugging away, and um, yeah, we'll get there. Keep on that grind. Oh, <laughs> keeping on that grind. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Grinding so hard. <laughs> but yeah, it is super exciting, and I'm just like... You hype? Yeah, I'm so hyped. Mm. I just can't wait to can't wait to get to Bali and like see something brand new and yep. just yeah, live in a new country and be in a new culture and yeah, really give it a good red hot crack. Yeah, red hot crack. Yeah. <laughs> Go overseas and uh, confuse the, uh, the Thai people and all the rest with our um, our accents and our slang. Yeah, our weird. <laughs> Our weird uh, turns of phrases. Yeah. So I can't wait for that. Yeah, me too. Um, we've also been just doing some research on places to go in Bali. Um, there are islands off Bali. Mm. Off the island of Bali. Um, <laughs> smaller islands. Yep. But um, I think we want to keep on the mainland. Yeah, and it's going to be, I think, a bit too hard to... Because I kind of... Restricted with time because we've only got two weeks. Yeah, well, I said, I said here that um, it's it's a place that's close to Thailand, cheap flights as well, so we can always go back and explore more. But yeah. there's so much to see on the on the mainland anyway that mm. why not just stay there, take less time, um, we'll have less time travelling, which takes away from experiencing different things, mm. and. Um, yeah, just really focus on that that main area and um, exploring what that has to offer. So, I um I took Sarah to the pub and uh, told her about <laughs> three or four different areas. Yeah. Um. So, Denpasar is the main city, and then mm. just below that's Kuta, where a lot of tourists go. So I'm thinking like maybe start Kuta, Denpasar. Mm bit of touristy and then also just the the city just see what it's all about because it's going to be there's probably going to be less tourists there and it's just going to be more authentic (laughs) as they say and just good to explore that um and then Uluwatu is just a bit south of that on like the little knob that sticks out of um (laughs) 
<laughs> of the Bali no. island. Yeah. Um, good for surf. Mm. I'd love to do that. Yeah, you're While we're there, surfing. Uh, I looked up the the dates for for the best months for surfing, and it's I think it said like May to September, so it'll be on okay, the tail cool. end, but it might be good because I surfed. I wasn't the greatest, but I could still do it. And maybe at the tail end, it might be a, not pumping so hard to <laughs> yeah. like manageable yeah. cool waves. But um, yeah, Uluwatu looks like a cool place. Yeah, like I think I'm going to maybe do like a surfing lesson or two or just get a board and see if I can I'll be keen give it to a film red that. crack. <laughs> I'll be keen to film that. Yeah. Um, we'll get the GoPro. We can attach yeah, it to the um, front of her most likely. <laughs> it will be a long board, so... Mm. Uh, won't interfere with your ability to try to stand up. Yeah, well, I feel like I've snowboarded and it's apparently quite a similar, like with your edges and stuff, it's quite a similar movement. It'll just be getting up on the board. Yeah, and luckily you're fit, so you'll be able to. Yeah. It's just like a, a push up and a, well, you pop. Mm. So you like push up and then you like <laughs> throw your legs to where you're, to your like center. Like underneath your body. Yeah. So you're like, yeah. Whoop. Yeah like that so yeah. it um <laughs> yeah that'll be really cool just to spend a few days down there mm. surfing you know just just hanging out lounging around yeah throwing the shakas <laughs> up just you know yeah. really getting back to those uh those beach roots <clears throat> mm. it's a vibe yeah it's a mood mm. um and then changu we've seen uh, quite a lot of creators mm. content creators um when they visit bali they they kind of rave about Changu, which is just to the left side of um, Denpasar, not too far away. So everything's all quite, quite yeah. close that we're looking at, but still, you know, far, far enough away that it's not the same place kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, Changu's got a, a good, um, a good rap from what we've seen. Um, yeah. What are you seeing about it? Well, I've just seen stuff on Instagram and like Lloyd and Mandy. Um, loved it there so it's just one of those places it's like just people just seem to love it there yeah um, so I'm just kind of curious to see what it's all about why everyone is so hype on it yeah <laughs> mm. um, and the same kind of idea for Ubud for me mm. which is just a bit north um, still pretty close but um, it's more of a it looks more of a like a foresty mm. it's not on the beach yeah a lot of wellness area um, yeah, I'm so hyped for that. I did have a little look into um, Ubud. Is it Ubud or U Ubud? I never know. I think I say Ubud. Yeah. U I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Tell us how to say it. Ubud. You know. um, but yeah, it just seems like more foresty and like there's like rice fields and stuff, which look dope. You got the monkey. Um, yeah, the monkey temple. Yep. Yep. So you can hang out with monkeys. Yep. Provocate them, and, uh, <laughs> provoke them, and um, mm. hopefully they don't get do eaten. shit. Mm. Get a get know, rabies, get a rabies <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, no, that's not in the budget. No thanks. Um, but yeah, just just those four places. So within two weeks, you know, like mm. three days here, three days there, three days there, like four or five days here. Yeah, I think it'd be good good to like get enough of an idea of a place, and then also mm. just to be able to, yeah, go to different places, be able to make some different content and then also just to get a feel of what it's like. So if we do choose to go back, then mm. we can kind of, we've done like four places so we can... We can be like, maybe we should go somewhere new or we really liked it here, so let's go back there and spend a bit more time there. Or, mm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it... I think it's a good shout. Yeah, good, good to explore and uh, not just pigeonhole mm. yourself and put yourself in one area and yeah. just um, kind of form an opinion based on a bit more of a large, larger sample size. Mm. So um, I think we don't like just taking things at face value too. Like if people say, oh, like Changu is shit or this place is shit, don't go there. We're going to be like, no, nah, we're <laughs> going to go there just because we want to form our own opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely find... Um, some places I really enjoy that other people mm. don't enjoy as much and um, we're just good at finding the um, the positives yeah. in a lot of places, most places. Mm. Um, 
so yeah, we you know we don't obviously do the research and um, see where to go and stuff, but at the same time, do some exploring and um, find yeah. out things for yourself because the internet can have a lot of bias. Mm. Um, so yeah, for sure. it's always good to find out things for yourself. So mm. yeah, we're always keen to um, yeah just try try different things and try things for ourselves. Yeah. Um, not take it at, as you said, face value. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing as well I've been looking into is applying for an international driver's permit. <clears throat> so I've seen in, in videos, um, especially in Thailand, I'm not sure about other countries, but it may be a, a similar theme, but mm. you'll see a lot of checkpoints for um, mostly scooter drivers because that's the main thing that tourists, foreigners um, jump on, also locals, mm. to get around places in Thailand. And um, they'll set up a lot of checkpoints for, um, like, the police will. So usually, usually to catch out foreigners, um, and they'll be looking for two things usually, like um, not wearing a helmet yeah. <clears throat> first, which you're a fucking idiot if you don't. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I crashed my push bike <clears throat> last week, and I hit my head, and like, that hurt. So imagine. And you're wearing a helmet. Yeah, and you I got was knocked out for. Mm couple seconds yeah and I was only going like 35 kilometers an hour which is still pretty fast but like well you're going 30 mm. but you told me 15 well I th it felt and then like I looked 15. like I looked on the Garmin app because she was connected and she mm. had a bike ride going and mm. I was like uh, if you look here you'll you see that your fastest going. speed was right here and where I crashed that was about <laughs> 29.22 kilometers an hour so yeah, yeah double that speed and yeah and we'll talk but yeah, it's um, it's just stupid not to wear a helmet. Like yeah, you don't look. Who I mean, cares if you look silly? I mean, at the end of the day, you, you're riding a motorbike. You're going a lot faster than a bike. And if you're in a foreign country, like you don't know exactly how other people operate, like what their mm. road rules are, and mm. yeah, just how how other people drive. So if you just you're not wearing a helmet, you, you can die. Yeah, and it's, it's not worth it just to not wear a helmet. Mm. So they'll be just looking. Just you think you look stupid, like you're gonna look even more stupid if you die. Yeah, you look pretty silly. <laughs> dead. Look at this guy. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. <What> a loser. <laughs> no, but you know um, what I mean. Yeah, it's they they set up checkpoints for yeah usually people foreigners not wearing a helmet. And the other thing I saw was also not having the correct license, which mm. if you're a foreigner, you need to apply and get a international driver's permit. So I looked into it here in Australia and it was um, pretty cheap. Um, they had a few different places you get it from and the cost ranged anywhere from $40 to $100 around there. Mm. Um, and it's valid for 12 months and if you have that I think it's just a piece of paper and then mm. you'll just be able to produce that uh, and you won't get a fine so mm. I was going to look up the fine I'm not 100% sure I think it was like it, it got raised recently mm. maybe mid-year last year and it was it was something like a thousand baht and then it went up to like 4,000 or maybe 10,000 baht for not having an international driver's license. Yeah. So that's a lot That's a lot of money. Yeah. Like, especially if you're trying to do things like, not like on the cheap, but even just for any, well, most people, mm. like that can be a lot of money. So like 10,000 baht is, I think, it's not, f oh. it might be like 400 bucks. Because I think 100 baht is about four bucks. Yeah, it's four hundred and thirty-seven dollars and ninety-four cents. So I could be Aussie wrong, dollars. but I know it got a massive, massive jump um, from mm. what the fine originally was, because it could actually it could be like five hundred baht originally to two thousand baht. Mm. So two thousand baht's like eighty bucks, yeah, like nearly ninety still, bucks, which is like in Thailand, that's <clears> a lot of money. It is, yeah. yeah. So that's um, that's something that you could just do here. Mm. I mean, it costs you one fine will cost you the same or if not more mm. than getting an international driver's license. Yeah. And if, if, especially if you're in the main areas like Phuket, Bangkok, wherever, Pattaya, you're going to be 
if you're going to be there for a long time or even for just like a week or two holiday and you're driving around on a scooter, mm -hmm. you can be pulled over multiple times yeah. and fined if you don't have their international driver's permit. So I just thought that's definitely something that I'll apply for and get. Um, mm. And that way it's already budgeted and I wrote, usually people don't budget fines, budget for fines in their budget. So mm. it's just for peace of mind and just being able to, you know, you're in a foreign country dealing with police. You don't want to be, yeah. you just want to have your T's crossed and your I's dotted kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. <laughs> I remember actually just on the fines thing, mm. um, I think we watched a Lloyd and Mandy video and Lloyd was saying that they got pulled over mm. and because he didn't have any cash on him, they kind of just said like, your fine's 3,000 baht and they had to go get 3,000 baht out of the ATM cash machine. Um, and then he came back and then he was like, always make sure when you're in a foreign country you have cash on you because a lot of the time the police will just take like whatever you say you've got. So if you say, oh, sorry, no, I've only got like 300 baht, they'll take that as the fine. Yeah, you can haggle on your fines. Yeah, <clears throat> which is just crazy because in Australia, if you get a fine, it's like too bad. Yeah, um, it's a bit looser over there. I've, I've seen and heard, so yeah. Um... <coughs> but I'm not sure like if they've put new laws in or whatever, if that's still a thing where you can haggle on your fine, but I, think I mean, I wouldn't is. be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you just do your research of where you're going and just know what, um, what things to look out for, you know, scams mm -hmm. and also just for what things tourists and foreigners usually get pulled up on and then just mm -hmm. make sure that you've, you've covered that. And then mm -hmm. when the thing happens, because you never know, you're in a foreign country dealing with police, that shit can escalate. Escalate. Yeah, escalate. Escalate. <laughs> it can escalate to uh, something a lot, a lot worse, and you definitely don't want to be in a foreign jail. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, that's just something that I was looking up and found it was quite, quite um, affordable mm. um, compared to the headaches you could have in the end. So mm. yeah, definitely look into a driver's permit, international one, if you're um, heading overseas, valid for twelve months. Mm. Um, not a lot of money, but um, definitely could save you a lot of money and a lot of headaches. So mm, yeah, for yeah, sure. Check it out. <laughs> um, um, so I just put on the end, and it's a really random one, and it doesn't really have anything to do with like online work or whatever. So but it's just <laughs> like just having booked the tickets. I'm now just feeling really excited to get rid of all our stuff. Like, mm. just not having anything is just so exciting and so freeing to me. Like, it's just... Can't wait to sell all my underpants. <laughs> Step one, sell them. I'll school man. <laughs> Step one, um, they were undies. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like... <clears throat> like, I'm looking at my stuff and I'm like... Fuck, I just can't wait to, like, not have anything. Yeah. It's so, It's such a strange feeling but it's really good at the same time because I'm like we just have to condense our lives into like essentially like four suitcases because we're going to have carry on and like checked in baggage well I and probably won't like, have a suitcase well I'm a bit whatever. I'm a bit <coughs> a bit smaller in travel but at the um, end of the day I don't know what we're going to need to take yeah so we're probably going to need to take more than I think but at the same time I'll definitely make an effort to have as bare bones as possible. Yeah, me too. But I just want to have like maybe a little bit of backup. Yeah, for sure. Stuff, just in case. Or backup, backup space as well. Yeah. Just so you can, if you if you pick up anything, you know, yeah. any new tech, mm. anything, um, <laughs> yeah. anything yeah. at all. You just got the ability to carry it around. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just so exciting to me. Like we're not going to be bound by a lease, we're not going to have anywhere to live, we're not going to have any furniture, mm. like it's just going to be essential things that we need and it's just so, like it just feels so freeing and exciting. And like... <laughs> so after booking our tickets um, last week, I've just been feeling like I have way too much stuff, so I'm gonna start getting rid of some of it. Steel cap boots. Another pair of steel cap boots. A 
office shoes, definitely don't need. Cycling shorts, bye! So I'll probably um, end up donating most of that stuff to Lifeline or Vinnie's and yeah, just feels good to get rid of some bits and pieces. Oi! No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's um, I it's just... a reoccurring theme when you mm. hear about people getting rid of their stuff that it just feels so freeing. And um, while we've tried to, you know, condense and really be mindful of our purchases, mm. uh, I said in the last video, it's like compared to other people, we don't have a lot of stuff. But when you actually look at it and you add it all up, mm. we've got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like. So it'll be yeah really good to um, yeah just have unload yeah just have the bag on our back kind of thing mm. and um, a laptop camera and that's about it yeah so yeah that's gonna be really I can't wait for the feeling of just yeah me too getting rid of all that shit and mm. um, yeah just being I remember able to doing it and yeet. like when I went and did a snow season I got rid of all my shit and just had like one bag and I was like this feels so good. <laughs> Mm. Like it was just so, just such a good feeling to just be like, I have nothing. Yeah, I mean I did the same um, mm. when I went to England. Mm. Um, yeah, I just had some clothes and mm. that was about it. So yeah, me too. That was, um, yeah, because um, just just the things you have, they just take up space in your mind. Yeah, they um, do. Even if it's not, you're not conscious of it. The more mm -hmm. things you have, the more things you have to worry about, the more things you have to think about. Mm. Um, so yeah, just being able to have more space in my mind as yeah. well yeah. is going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. So I can use it for smart things, <laughs> for thinking, and not for thinking about my boots. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Mm. I think anything to add there, Sarah? No, I think we pretty much covered it all. Yeah, it's a bit shorter no. this week, <laughs> um, but you know, I've said before, some weeks are um, go go go, and some weeks mm. are more um, are more subdued and just um, just getting on with what you're already doing, and you know, you find a few new things that you learn, but mm. you can't be reinventing the wheel every week kind of shit so yeah yeah it's definitely it, it's good though yeah because yeah sometimes you just gotta do what you're doing and um just perfecting that you can't mm. be exploring new things every week and yeah all that jazz so yeah we've um we've had a good week uh, next mm. week will be even better i'm sure mm -hmm. we'll come back and um i'm pretty sure we'll have booked some places in Bali to um, yeah. to stay and we'll, we'll have do some a, research. definitely a, a better idea of where we're going to go and mm. what, what the time frame is going to be so we'll um we'll leave it there but we'll just say if you could um if you got any thoughts um frank and sarah gmail.com mm. is our email we'd love to hear from you guys um in the comment section as well um like and subscribe <laughs> all that that'd be sick did you want to um show them your cop could car tattoo no i'll, no. Show, I'll show it when the, the, <laughs> the sleeves fully healed so i got my okay. sleeve finished but um wait till it's healed and we'll see yeah. how it comes out but yeah. yeah we'll um we'll save that for later <laughs> but uh crap <laughs> is uh the male, male version, mm -hmm. so I've been saying it as a girl. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm, I'm fine with my sexuality. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll leave it there, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And um, we will see you in the next one. Bye. 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 Bye.